Hello and welcome to this An Actor Thomas video. Today we're going to be doing a facts and date video about a member of the royal family. So here we go. Now today we are going to be talking about uh, Prince Ernest Augustus. Uh, he was um, the fifth son of King George III and um, he was quite a notorious individual. He was born on the 5th of June, 1771 or 72, I think it's 71. And um, of course, uh, for around 15 years or so, he was known as the King of Hanover. But before that, he was uh, given the dukedom of uh, Cumberland and and down. And like I said, uh, he was born in uh, Buckingham House and then moved with his uh, other siblings to Crewe, uh, the palace at Crewe. And he, uh, he spent many happy years there until his uh, father felt that his education had reached the point where it needed to reach to go and to study over in uh, Germany, over in Hanover in Germany, which he did and uh, after a few years of study in uh, Germany, Ernest Augustus believed that he had uh, hit the correct level that he necessarily needed to be for uh, for his station in life and he uh, implored his father to allow him to uh, join the military in which he did and uh, he spent uh, many happy years under um, some great generals in the uh, in the Hanoverian uh, military uh, he enjoyed some uh, notoriety as a uh, battle commander and a good leader of men but there are certain things that did happen um, during uh, one experience he was he uh, accidentally got disfigured by the uh, big scar that became uh, famous with him across his uh, one side of his face down his cheek and that uh, disfigurement obviously carried on with him for the rest of his life. After a certain amount of time, um, he returned back to uh, the UK because um, the generals that he had spent such a good amount of time with and he had such a good relationship with, that they respected him, even though he was a lower la rank, but they understood his uh, military prowess new generals were being brought in and um, they were less forthcoming towards uh, the prince and like I said he uh, didn't appreciate this so he uh, requested to return back to the UK to serve in uh, Great Britain at this point uh, his, pa his father King uh, George III imparted upon him of course the titles and uh, he was then automatically put into the House of Lords and he, uh, he served there for a while and he, he he believed that he was doing what was necessary. Uh, then he became a little bit um, disinterested they, they, they say and wished to rejoin the military. Obviously, uh, knowing what the situation was over in Germany with the uh, generals that would not be exactly beneficial towards his um, military career, he uh, wished to join the British army. He, he, his father allowed it. Actually, no, his uh, brother, the Prince Regent, allowed it as his father was in one of his um, spates of madness at the time when this request was uh, put forward 
and uh, the Prince Regent had, had allowed him, his brother, to do so under the careful gaze of their other brother, the Duke of York, who um, was in many ways kind of in charge of all military um, things that happened in the UK at that time. Okay, another thing that did happen was that um, during one of his uh, times away from the military, he was um, he was at home, I believe, and uh, he went to he went to bed, and it was at night, and uh, he woke up after being very badly assaulted and he uh, he tried to get out of his bed and he was calling for his uh, his servants and only one of his uh, one of his valets rushed to him and saw how very um badly beaten he had he was he had been um i believe he'd been he, he's been slashed in the arm his leg and he was losing quite a lot of blood and he'd been um like i said beaten quite a bit and um, the full household was rounded up together to discover who it was and only one member, another valet was not there so they, um, they, they created a manhunt for him and he was finally caught and um, arrested and put in prison for the assault on a member of the royal family. Um, after this the um he spent a long time kind of recuperating and he um he it said it is said that he, he he started looking at life in a, in a in a rather different way and became a quite a different person by this point um at this point in our story it's um roughly around 18 um 1815 1816 and um, his only legitimate niece, Princess Charlotte of Wales, has married and she is uh, to Prince Leopold and they are expecting their first child. Obviously, unfortunately, um, whilst she was giving birth to her baby son, she herself, um, the baby was born stillborn and she died soon afterwards which left the question of the inheritance of the uh, the throne in question. So there was a rather big insurgence for the brothers um, to find suitable women to marry, which um, Prince Ernest Augustus did. He married a lady called Princess uh, Fredrika. I believe is her name and they got married over in Germany and then they were going to come over to England and have another marriage. When um, Ernest Augustus' mother Queen Charlotte discovered who her son had married she uh, was disgusted. She did not like um, her son's wife. He, um, he believed that she was um, not correct for her son to marry and she believed that he was marrying beneath himself by marrying her but they were deeply in love they um, from all accounts they were a, a, a relatively very happy marriage it was um, quite loving compared to some of the other marriages that um, Prince Ed, um, Ernest Augustus brothers had had with their their wives it, you know they, they 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 did certainly last because they uh, there was no divorce or there didn't seem to be any massively amount of um, affairs that had been um, uh, put forward by either party so um over the period of the marriage they did have um some sadness um um Princess Frederica was um, pregnant a few times, but unfortunately she uh, lost quite a few of them, either in miscarriages or stillbirths. 
the only one that did survive was their only son, uh, a boy obviously called Prince George, who um, over the years did become a lot more. He was looked after very much by his parents, being their only born child that survived. And like I said, the, 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 by the time that the three of them did become very close and very considerate and very caring. After Prince, after King George the Fourth dies, um, sorry, after King George the Third, um, Prince Ernest's father dies, um, and his other, his his slightly older brother, Prince Edward the Duke of Kent, dies in the same month. Their eldest son, the uh, Prince Regent slash Prince of Wales, Prince. George becomes George the Fourth, and over that time things um, start going a little bit downhill for uh, the um, the Cumberlands because they struggle to um, l live the vast amount of the vast life that they they do live in London. So they do move to Germany for a, a few years. Just to because there's a uh, a cheaper way of living over there, um, but they uh, they they do come back to England quite a lot. Obviously, King George the Fourth is on the throne for ten years. Then, after he dies, his the uh, the younger brother, the Duke of Clarence. Uh, William, the Duke of Clarence, becomes King William the Fourth. Now, um, at this point, obviously, there is a little bit more speculation about what's going to happen because after William dies, then uh, the, the everyone knows the heir to the British throne is going to be Victoria, um, the Duke of Cumberland's niece. But what of their second title, the King? Of Hanover. Now, there is a uh, piece of law over in Hanover that says that a woman or queen cannot rule by herself on the Hanoverian throne. It has to be a male. So um, the Duke of uh, Cumberland very much is aware of this. So he has started to think that when this day happens and William the Fourth does die, that will mean that he will become the King of Hanover, not um, because his niece Victoria cannot become the Queen of Hanover. Um, so he um, he became a he, he once he became King of Hanover, him and his family moved over there permanently. Um, they came over to England. A lot less than they ever did when his brothers were on the thrones, and a lot of people believe that is because a he uh, felt betrayed that he should have become king of England as well as king of Hanover. He believed that his niece wasn't up to the job and that she was uh, unstable, and her mother and um, Sir John Conroy were really pulling the strings behind the throne and it really became quite heated between um, the, the, the the family in that respect that you had um, obviously the rest of the royal family over here in England and then him sort of stewing over in Hanover believing that he's the rightful person that should be sitting on the throne and he in many ways uh, becomes a little bit um, embittered towards his uh, the family uh, another thing that obviously slightly gets things better in that respect is that um, when um, Victoria marries um, her cousin, Prince Albert of saxe coburg and Gotha, um, relations become a little bit more accepted because there is um, a lot more um, streamlining in the in the family the unnecessary kind of hangers-on such as Sir John Conroy and his entire family 
are completely forced out. The Duchess of Kent, Queen Victoria's mother, is in many ways um, sidelined completely, which is, is you know, um, quite interesting. And because, especially with Prince Albert, um, the king felt that he could use their joint their joint connections with Germany to feel as if he could use that as a back doorway into getting um, more of a connection with his niece uh, the, uh, Victoria. And necessarily that didn't really happen. Um, and over the time there, there, there were still strained relationships but it was a much better relationship. Especially when Victoria started having children and um, there, used to, there was a lot less um, like forced um, communications, it became a lot more free, it became a lot more of an intimate um, writing um, communication between them and it's um, it, it, over, over that period of time things started to um, become a lot more free and th there was a th near the end of um, King Augustus um, Ernest Augustus of King of Hanover life the um, there was almost a warmness to that uncle and niece relationship and of course he was always close to his uh, siblings that were still alive and yes it was definitely a um, became a lot more of a family in that relationship because um, after um, particularly after um, his time over in Germany and his kind of wanting to stay over here and join the military and everything like that, he became a lot less. And his falling out with his mother about his wife became a lot less kind of interconnected with the family. And there was a, 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 an extreme, an extreme a separation in many ways, which is very sad for him because he, in many ways, he was, um, from what I've been able to read, quite a needy individual that would have liked to have been um, a bit more involved in the central workings of the family. There was the opportunity of him being buried in Windsor Castle, uh, St George's Chapel. Unfortunately, um, uh, the King wished to be buried in his adoptive country of Hanover, so that was that. But he, um, from the from the very beginning, he was very much a British man who was the, the, uh, the king of a foreign land. And but he, by the end of it, he did feel very much as if he was a German king who happened not to have been born German, but he had incredible links to that country and incredible links to his people, not only in the UK, but of course, like I said, over in Germany, in Hanover. I hope this video has been very interesting for you. I hope you've learnt a lot. If there is any questions, please um, leave a comment down below. And if I know the answer, or, or I can find out the answer for you, I will, of course, try and answer them. Um, if you like, you can become one of my um, subscribers. You can become one of my patrons if you follow the link down below. Um, like I say, I hope you have a wonderful week, and I shall see you next time. Goodbye.